In this video, we will continue reviewing our Unit 12 Equations Unit. So in this video, we are going to review multiplying and dividing equations. So go ahead and add that into your notebook at the very, very front where you're putting the units of study. And when you're ready, flip in your notebook back behind your notes that you should have taken for the first day. All right, so today we're going over equations with multiplication and division. So before we get started, if you want to pause and write in this information and then unpause when you're ready, we're going to go over the parts of the equations again, but we have two more parts of the equation that we need to talk about. So in this section of parts of the equation, we're looking at this piece right here, this 5 and the x. Now remember, when numbers are smushed together, there is a little hidden multiplication sign in there. Remember, the x or any letter is referred to as the variable. And the number out front, we call the coefficient. You could also think about it like the coworker to the variable. It actually tells you how many times that variable shows up. So in the example 5x, that's the same as x plus x plus x plus x plus x. There's five of them. That would be like the expanded form of doing it. Or you could also think of it as 5 times x. Now, in this example, I have a 1x. Or I could write it without the 1. Because think about it. If I just have an x, I automatically have a 1x. So in this one, the coefficient is 1 and the variable is x. But remember, if I just have an x here, it's the same thing as writing 1x. I know that there's only one of them there, so why do I have to put the 1 in front of it? So that's your little quick review of some extra vocabulary words that are part of multiplying and dividing. So remember, anytime you see a variable up against a coefficient, it's actually multiplication. All right, so let's look at some examples. So our first example, we're actually going to fall back to that uh, method that we've been using with that modeling and the math. So what I would love for you to do is draw that wall down your equation through that equal sign. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. The equation is balanced. You have to do the same thing to both sides. So if I model this and I want to model three x's, I'm going to draw three x bars, x, x, x. And then I'm going to write 15. So I'm going to do 15 positives because there are 15 plus signs. And see how I have three X's here? I'm going to try to break these 15 into three groups. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's all 15 plus signs. And Funny enough, I said that we were breaking them into groups because I need to figure out what 1x is equal. So 1x is equal to the amount that are in one group, which is equal to 5. So 1x is equal to 5. Now remember how I was talking about groups? Remember when you do the inverse operation that a multiplication sign is stuck between two numbers that are smushed together? When I break something into groups, that's actually referred to as division. So I can actually divide 15 into three groups. Same thing as what I did here with the pieces. So I can cancel here. I'm left with x equals and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I get the same thing that I did whenever I was doing the modeling. And remember, you can check your work. So if I check my work, I can write 3 times my blank for x is equal to 15. So 3 times my x box is equal to 15. Well, what goes in for x? Well, what did we figure out that x was equal to? We said x was 5. So that means that 3 times 5 is 15. Is that true? Yes, it is. That means I got it correct. So there's your first multiplication example, and we also included the modeling with it. All right, let's do another one. So looking at my next example, again, I'm going to model because I can. And then I'm going to do the math. So remember, you draw your line down your equal sign for both of them. I draw the wall because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. I can't cross the wall unless I do both. And in this one, I have two x. So I have two x's to deal with. 
and then I have these 12 negatives. So because I have two x's, I'm going to try to break these 12 negatives into two groups. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I have only one x, how many are going to be in one group? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six negatives are in one group. So again, if I come over here and do the math, remember there's multiplication in here. The inverse of multiplication is division. Same as when we broke them into groups. Division means break into groups. So I'm going to divide by 2. Cancel the opposite. So I'm left with x is equal to, and then I have negative 12 divided by 2. Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Use the triangle. A negative divided by a positive gives me a negative solution. So I get negative 6 again. And I can double check my work. Remember, all you do to check your work is you write the problem. So I have 2 times blank for my x. My x box is equal to negative 12. Okay, well, what did we say was x that we could plug in? Well, in both options, we got negative 6. And if I do 2 times negative 6, do I get negative 12? Well, 2 times 6 is 12. Check it with the triangle. A positive times a negative gives me a negative. So I end up at negative 12. So I got it right. All right, let's move on to some division examples. So our first division example looks like this. Now with division, we can't do any modeling with it. And that's still okay. I'm going to draw my line down my equal sign. And in this problem, I have x divided by 4. Okay, well, think to yourself, what's the opposite of x divided by 4? I have to multiply by 4 on both sides. When I have opposites, they cancel. I'm left with x is equal to, and 8 times 4 is 32. Now, if I do my check step, because I can always check, I have my x box divided by 4 is equal to 8. Well, what goes in the box? What did we say x was equal to when we were solving? We said x was equal to 32. So if I do 32 divided by 4, do I get 8? You better believe that yes, I do. Now, if you don't get it when you do your check step, remember I made the mistakes in the last video. You have to go back into your work and check to see what are you doing here. Where did I make a mistake? Did I copy the problem right? Did I do the correct inverse operation? Did I do the correct multiplication? So make sure you're always checking your work. All right, we have one more example to do together. And then I'm going to have you try a few on your own. So this one looks a little different because I have this scary fraction in here. He's so terrifying. But use the same rules that you were using before. This is multiplication with x. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by a half for both sides. Now, I want you to think about this. Are you allowed to divide by fractions? The answer is no. So we're going to have to do keep, switch, flip. Keep, switch, flip. So we're going to have the original one half switch to multiply, and then we'll flip over this fraction. Because this would be like 1 half divided by 1 half, and we're not allowed to do that. Same thing here, it'd be like 5 divided by a half. So I'm going to flip it over. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. This will divide and be equal to 1, which is then just comparable to our x, 1x. Do keep switch flip here. 5 times 2 over 1. Lonely whole numbers go over 1. 5 times 2 is 10. 1 times 1 is 1. So I just get 10 over 1 is just 10. So now I have x equals 10. I can do my check step now. 1 half times blank is equal to 5. Well, we said the blank in our case, was 10. Fraction times the whole number, whole numbers go over 1. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. And then finish it. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 
and that worked because I was supposed to get five. So yes, this one worked. All right, so your job, I want you to try this example. If you wanna do modeling, you can do modeling, or if you wanna do the math, you can do math. You choose, choose your own work style, and unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. So if you did the math, you would have divided by four because this shows multiplication. There cancel, so I'm left with x is equal to negative 16 divided by four gives me negative four. Then you need to make sure you do your check. I'm gonna do it down a little bit lower. So check. So I have four times blank for x is equal to negative 16. I'm going to plug in what I got. I said x equals negative 4, so I should be able to plug that into this box. 4 times negative 4 gives me negative 16, so I know I got it right. If you did modeling, you had 4x is equal to negative 16, so you should have drawn it with 4x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you should try to make these 16 into these four groups. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 1x was equal to negative 4. So same thing that you would have gotten if you did the math. All right, here is your next example that you're going to try on your own. Now this one will not work for modeling, so you're gonna to have to do the math for this one. So again, you're gonna draw your wall down the middle. This says x divided by three. Well, think to yourself, what's the opposite of divide by three? It's times three on both sides. So I'm left with x is equal to a negative nine times three. Well, nine times three is 27 the triangle, a negative times a positive gives me a negative solution. So I get negative 27, but I'm not done. I need to do my check step. Blank over 3 is equal to negative 9. Okay, well blank is x. We said that x was equal to this negative 27, so I'm going to plug that in there. Is negative 27 divided by 3, is that negative 9? Well, 27 divided by 3 is 9. Use the triangle to check your integer. Negative divided by a positive gives me a negative. So I got negative 9, and I got it right. So yes, this is right. Okay, last one you're going to try on your own. It's a fraction one. So go ahead and look back in your notebook if you need to. And go ahead and try this one on your own. So again, you're going to draw your wall down the middle. This shows multiplication, so I need to do division with my fraction. However, I run into a problem when I go to do division with my fraction because I'm not allowed to do that. Keep, switch, flip on both sides. So I'm going to keep the one-fifth, switch to multiply, flip this guy over. Keep the eight. Which to multiply, flip this guy over, 5 over 1. 1 times 5 gives me 5. 5 times 1 gives me 5. So I'm just left with 1x. So x just comes to the bottom. Now I multiply here. 8 times 5 gives me 40 over 1. And four, 40 divided by 1 just gives me an answer of 40. All right, let's check our work. So I have one fifth times blank for x is equal to eight. Well, we know that x is equal to 40. That's what we got. Fraction times a whole number, you have to put a one underneath. Lonely whole number gets a one. So now I'm going to multiply across. 1 times 40 gives me 40. 5 times 1 gives me 5. And finish the problem. 40 divided by 5 gives me 8. Well, that matches what I was supposed to get. So my answer is correct. So yes, 
x equals 40 is the correct answer. If you have any questions, make sure you ask your teacher and make sure you've copied your notes into your notebook, please. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.